Hey, what's going on everybody? And we are back for yet another Fallout 4 mod review. Really quick before we get into this, I just want to plug myself. We are going to be streaming Fallout 4 on Twitch later today, so if you want to learn more about that, stay tuned for the end of the video or just check the description down below. Thanks for your time, let's get right back into the video. So, today we are checking out another one of Another One's Mods, also known as Retro Paladin. Today we're checking out Cyber Out 77. Now, initially I thought this mod just added a couple of swords and some cool animations, and it definitely does do that, but it actually does a whole lot more. It adds so many swords, more than you could possibly imagine, not just katanas, but a bunch of other cool, unique swords as well, along with a full suite of custom animations for both first and third person, as well as some unique features that I haven't really seen before. So, let's go ahead and take this thing in-game and see what's up with it. So for starters, if you want to acquire any of these swords, they're actually not added to the leveled list, but rather there is a new location, which is an antique sword store. And if you go in there, there will be a trunk full of a bunch of conserved blades. You take these blades to a chemistry station, and that's when you can start crafting some of these really cool new swords. So for starters, let's go ahead and check out some of these amazing new swords that are integrated via this mod. All you gotta do is look for the new section called Sword Recovery, and from there we have access to a ton of new swords. So let's go ahead and see what all is included with this mod. Starting with the Covert Blade, reminds me a lot of a cyberpunk style sword, very good looking. The Dark Flower, the Dragon, Eastern Flame, looks very nice. The Executioner, the Golden Dawn, sort of clips off the edge there. The Golden Ninjato Katana, the Hundred Applause Nodachi, the Ikibana, the Induction Sword, which I really like. This one feels like it fits right into Fallout, especially Fallout 4 with all of the crazy melee weapon mods that you have. You have some fusion batteries or some fusion cells right there. This definitely feels like a Fallout weapon. The Iron Tiger, the Ivy, just a Katana. Not even going to try to pronounce that or that. <laughs> and another one, <laughs> the Politana. This is another one that looks very cyberpunk, has a Nice little slit in the back there. Pretty cool looking. The Rising Sun. Rose. Russian Trophy. Keeps going. So many swords included. As you can see, we are still scrolling. Luckily, they're all in alphabetical order. And finally, finishing off with Zoro. So, lots of swords. All you gotta have is one of those conserved blades and some other parts. And all of these have the same stats. They all do a damage of 160, have a swing speed of very fast, and a weight of 1 pound and a value of 50 caps. But there are also weapon modifications that we'll get into at the end of the video. So now we get into the real meat and potatoes of this mod, and that is the animations. As you can see, we are holding this weapon in a very unique style to Fallout 4, but pretty similar to something from, say, Cyberpunk. It also has fully unique custom animations for attacking, as well as your heavy melee attack, and blocking, even sprinting, which is a really cool one. And I believe there's also a sprint charge attack as well. But we need to get our stamina back first. That should just about do it. There we go. Nice little charge attack there. Now, there are also third-person animations. Your heavy attack. It's a nice lunge. Blocking as well. It really is a shame that Fallout 4 blocking is just a parry rather than being able to hold the block, but it is what it is. Then the sprinting charge attack. And I believe there's also one more if we can get it to trigger. There it is. <laughs> and another really interesting feature is if this weapon is holstered, whenever you pull it out, it actually does damage. So that's pretty interesting and really cool. So. You can do some really fun stuff with that one if you're in a, a tight situation, let's say. Now, let's go ahead and check this out at the weapons workbench. I won't waste your time by using all of the weapons because they all have the same attachments as far as I can tell. Whenever you take them here, we have two modifications. I'll show you the animations first because it's nice and short. We have the katana animation, which is exactly what we just saw. The katana one-handed animation. So it's the exact same thing, except that you hold it with one hand, but we'll go ahead and show those after we're done here. And then the standard animation. So this will use the default melee animations from Fallout 4 in case you just want the new model, but don't want all of the fancy animations. So that part is completely up to you. And then we can do blade modification. We have no upgrade, 
the Serrated Blade, Electrified, and Stun Pack. And Stun Pack can be a lot of fun. So we'll go ahead and equip that one really quick. So the one-handed animations, like I said, are pretty much the same. You just have one hand as opposed to two. That was an accident. But that actually lets us try out the stun pack if he doesn't die immediately. He did. Let's get something a little bit bigger. All right. This is a worthy foe for our sword. So this thing already has a pretty high stock damage. I don't even have any melee perks. And as you can see... It almost kills him <laughs> in two hits. And there's the stun pack at work. That's what's really fun about these ones. That's a vanilla feature, but it's always cool to see. So, these swords are not something to be messed with. If we bring in another Deathclaw, and you actually use your full potential here, this is a pretty serviceable melee weapon, so definitely worth hunting down all of these parts and crafting yourself some of these new swords. So, that is Cyber Out 77. Another one, aka Retro Paladin, has been killing it lately with these mods, so I'm sorry I got to this one a little bit late, but it kind of just caught my eye at the wrong time. So, <laughs> my bad for that, but it really is a wonderful mod. And because of that, I encourage you to go out and support the mod author, and any mod author that makes mods that you enjoy. If you're not able to donate, you can always endorse. There are many ways to support them and show that you care. So anything in your capacity, donate, endorse, just let them know how much you appreciate their hard work because they make these mods for free. So we really owe it to them for being able to enjoy Fallout 4 this late in its life cycle with such amazing mods. And with that, we bring our video to a close. And like I said, I did want to plug my Twitch just for a second here because we are going to be streaming in just a little bit. At 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we will be streaming Fallout 4 with some settlement building. It's been a while since I've done settlement building, and I really want to get back into it with you guys, so it'll be a nice, fun experience to be able to build some settlements and have you guys be able to join in on the fun, give me tips and tricks, and maybe even influence the direction of the settlement itself. So, if you want to try that out, the link for my Twitch will be in the description as well as on the channel. If you want to come by, say hi, that'd be really great, and I'd love to be able to chat with some of you guys. So, I hope to see you there, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like, subscribe, all that stuff that gets us into the algorithm and gets more mod recommendations to the people that are looking for them. I really appreciate you for sticking all the way through to the end of the video, and I hope you enjoyed. Peace!